you know, not getting to know or see you, um, you know, the, as you call it, silent partner and stuff. But uh, it, it was something that, um, yeah, it, it did get a lot of people just excited to hear cool. all the stories. Um, cool. We're yeah. not on yet, right? Yeah, no, we can start. We'll start right now. One second. Okay. <laughs> Nelly, yeah. can you do me a favor on my nightstand? Have some earphones, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to get the earphones just a little bit. Oh, you, you get the earphones. Yeah, I can hear you out there. Okay. Yeah, man, um, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, hold on a second. I spoke with, um, I don't remember, Woody Rock from Drew Hill. Woody? Okay, yes. cool. Man, I haven't seen those guys in forever. He says to say that you have the best popcorn in the studio. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. We have secret popcorn. Everybody secret. falls in love. Not only with the studio, but the popcorn. Oh, okay. So, was this something you should make special, or what was the secret? Uh, yeah. <laughs> can't can't give up the studio secret for the popcorn. Yeah, it's amazing that somebody would he, he would say from years later say, "Oh, just tell him that we loved his popcorn." And I'm like, a lot well, of people would come to the studio and look forward to the popcorn. Oh, good. <laughs> yep, they would look forward to the popcorn. Get them through long nights sessions. <laughs> Be okay. sleepy. Go make some popcorn. But where where did that come from? Then making again you know, the popcorn stuff. I, I don't. You know, I'm, I'm a popcorn lover. So okay. when I'd be working by myself, you know, I'd say, "Hey, you know, somebody make me some popcorn." And so then I would make it for myself. And then, you know, as I work with artists, they'd come in. Oh, that smells so good. Let me try it. And they say, <laughs> you know, we. One of the guys knows how many bags we went through one night. It's like we have a record of how many, you know, microwave popcorn bags we went through. So wow, it's, uh, it's, I don't eat it as much. Okay. That, was, that was like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. So I kind of, over the years, of course, you might have cut, cut back. <laughs> yeah. I did, was you know. your studio in Atlanta? Is that where you're based? Well, yeah. As, as a matter of fact, when we had the listening party for the album, we had it at my old studio, which is now owned by T.I. Oh, he bought it. So he owns it now. I don't I don't any longer own it, but it's still intact the way that, you know, me and my engineer uh, created it. it. It was called Silent Sound and T.I. named it Super Sound. Wow. But it's the same facility, you know, different, little, little bit different decor, you know. Yeah. So. So, yeah. What, what, why did you get why did you why did you get rid of it? It was just kind of a business decision. You know, okay. I wasn't working that much and you know paying staff and was ready to move on and said, hey, you know, if I work, I can go out to Faces Studio or which I ended up doing most of my work out there with him, you know, when we worked together on his albums or after seven with whoever I end up in Los Angeles anyway. So it was just kind of a one of those decisions. So couldn't find my headphones, so let's roll. Okay, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, and but then also, um, you know, congratulations on the release of the Chris uh, 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 of of, the, uh, of your new album. Um, Thank you. Appreciate how was that. the listening party, and how was uh... it? Was great. It was great. It was it was small. I kept it down to you know the people that participated, my family and some close friends. Uh, so it was it was cool, short and sweet. You know, I told him when it was over, I said, hey, I don't own the studio anymore. It's like, T.I.'s making me pay for this. Like, we got to get out of here. We got to go. <laughs> okay. You know, so okay. it actually made it good because people couldn't linger and loiter around like we normally would. So we had to, like, to get out. But it was really nice. I appreciated it. And everybody loved the album. And uh, so I'm glad it's over. And I got it behind me. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot of, it was a lot of fun. A lot of work, but, you know, a lot of fun. So, so cool. Promoting an album independently, what what does it involve now? I mean, you've done a listeners listeners party, you you sort of got it up all on the social media sites, but what's next? I, you know, just not really a lot. I told somebody they were asking me, "Oh, what's the big you know promotion plan?" I said, "I don't really have a big plan. I'm not trying to. I'm not an artist, so I'm not trying to blow up. Yeah, you know, I'm not trying to. I didn't do it for sales." You know, Christmas music, like I said, other than Mariah Carey, you know, it doesn't really <laughs> sell. She's the she's the Christmas queen. Yeah. So I told her it was just really for myself. It truly was for myself. A last body of work. If five people buy it and say, hey, I bought your album, I love it, then that's that's I'm I'm ecstatic about that. So it's not about trying to generate all these sales. I just wanted to share it with yeah. the world, but I did it for myself. I'd never produced a total album myself, I'd never written and produced a whole album by myself. So this was like, you know, something that I wanted to do. 
to see if I could do it. Like when Kenny did Exhale, he yeah. said, well, I just want to see if I can do it. Wow. And I go, oh, I know you can do it. And so he did a great job on Exhale. And over the years, I've always wanted to do the same thing. So when the Christmas album idea came about, I go, well, that's the perfect thing for me to do because I love Christmas music and it's, I love writing Christmas music. So a lot of things, you know, were, were checked off the list for this project. So that's it, man. Whatever it does, like I said, it does. If somebody finds a song and plays it, that's great. I'm good. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm totally good with it. Yeah. Uh, is there going to be time for any videos or any promos? Is it just it? That's it. No, that? no. One of the one of the singers actually asked me, Dennis Bettis, who sings a couple of the songs. He asked me about it, and I thought about it. Nah, you know, got to know when to quit. Okay. You know, just just <laughs> let it just let it be there. You know, let it be there. And uh, so yeah, we we did we did discuss it, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. The good thing about the Christmas album is that it'll never get dated. We can do a video next year. Yeah, you know, to maybe revive it, say, hey, since we didn't do a video when we released it this year, let's do a video to one of the songs that I don't know, you know, maybe didn't get a lot of attention or something. So no, no videos. I'm, just, I'm good. <laughs> you know, do some interviews with you and a couple of people. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, let you guys promote it for me. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, so I've uh, so I, you know I've listened to it and 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 I've sort of changed sort of okay I've have, I've narrowed it down to my top five wow, um, wow. okay but but cool. when you think of um my favorite song on on the album um is um uh, let me make sure i don't mispronounce it one christmas wish yeah and, and the reason why, why is that it, your favorite why is it be, your favorite what does it make you think of um so my my uh, my father um came um passed away um two years ago uh, december mm -hmm. 4th and yeah. he 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 came he was visiting us here in, in the uk um he, he was diabetic his sugar levels are high we took him to the hospital mm -hmm. sadly got pneumonia in the hospital he was getting better caught covid in the hospital and passed away in the hospital so um when i listened so but the last memory we did have is what christmas what he he spent with christmas before so when i'm listening to the song and I could just, it just felt to me that this was a, a somebody who had lost a loved one, a parent, yeah. and they were sort of wishing, you know, just that one Christmas wish. And it just, and I, in fact, when I was listening to it, I just had this video of my, just images of my dad. And, you know, when I was a kid, and I could just see pictures of my dad right. when, I was, when I was a kid and and the different conversations. And mm -hmm. I could just see the video. So that yeah. song just becomes very real and 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 it's and a timeless song um right. you know it's like a loop of andrews dance with my father or Aaron Hall's i miss yeah. you so that was why that song just became yeah. an instant standout well i'll me. tell you this that song was written for my dad my dad passed away in 2017 wow i couldn't find the right male singer to sing it so i asked angel to sing it and once angel sang it it just like tugged at my heartstrings yeah. and I lived with it. I couldn't unhear angel singing. Okay. And so it's, so I just flipped the lyric to her, to yeah, a little yeah, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, the song was written about my father. Ah, uh, see that's, that's, that's what the, So that's why it, it connected you because it was yeah. written for my dad. Yeah. He passed away in 2017. Yeah. You know, yeah. he wasn't sick. You know, he went in for this uh, adjustment on his uh, a heart valve. Yeah. He ended up having a stroke and, you know, he passed away. It was like, oh, wait a minute. My dad was just cutting the grass the other day. Yeah, same he was 92, dad. 93 years old. He was oh. still driving, going to church, singing in the choir. Mm -hmm. And I drove over and said, oh, it's just an outpatient thing. You know, he'll stay one night. And I go over there and I lose my dad. Wow. So that's what the song is about. So I'm glad that you said that uh, yeah. because it hits me the same way. It's, it's about if I had one more Christmas wish, that gift would be yeah. to spend it with him just one, one last time if I had known that. You know, yeah, what I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a very poignant song. Usually I have to walk out of the room if it comes on because it just it's still, you know what I'm saying? Still well, gets yeah, me. it it did. In fact, on, on the um, yeah, so my dad's birthday would have been the first of November. He would have been 78 or so, 77. Mm -hmm. And and I sort of use a, a minute for the 40 second clip 
using that song <laughs> and it just it, you know it just told the yeah. story just by having the yeah. different images and so i thought in the story you see it it's graphic it's very graphic and angel she delivers the vocal soul i mean like i said once she did that and i was married to it i couldn't i couldn't put a guy on it <laughs> you know i had to leave it you know. Would you? That was, so I, I would say if there was ever a video to shoot so that that type of you know you know, getting oh, you know, yeah because yeah, everybody can relate. It could be an yeah. aunt, uncle, boyfriend, sister, brother. It's yeah. universal. It's what Kenny and I call. It's a universal song. You can plug in your person. You can plug in your dad. Yeah. And everybody can plug their person in. Yeah. So that and I agree with you. If I did do it, that is the poignant song at Christmas that I would probably do. A video too because it's just so powerful yeah. and it's universal everybody relates to that whoever that person is that they lost that they wish they had one more christmas wish you plug that person in so yeah. i agree with you but yeah. i'm glad that you said that too because i you know that, that that makes me really think about it Very yeah good. as i said i did i do love it and and i don't get i listen to it as as, as many times and then the, the i love try again you know try I again's love, a good record try again's yeah. a really good record because I, I think it's 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 a throwback type of mm -hmm. track that we don't really hear now, and it just it mm -hmm. it wasn't trying to do too much, and it just mm -hmm. you know, and I like the inter interaction between the male and female singer, and I, I, I was think that was I was trying to, you know, like I love Jimmy and Terry, and I said, okay, this this is my fake attempt at <laughs> Alex, Jarrell and Alex. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. that's what I that's what I kept in my head of you know going back and forth making them sound like they're a couple yeah and that's yeah, even yeah. at the end i said okay you guys say i love you baby it's like yeah. i love you baby yeah, to make yeah. it so that was my fake uh paying homage to Jimmy and Terry. <laughs> of course you know i could not do what they do but that's what it put me in mind of was you know uh alex and sherelle doing i think I, one part in there i said let's sing it together yeah <laughs> try try so you know, I hope they don't sue me for doing that, but no. it's just out of, it's out of respect and, and love for their work, to their great work. So that that's what I was thinking of. I was kind of channeling my inner, you know, Jimmy Jam and Terry with Alex and Sherelle. So but it's a good record. It's a fun. Yeah, fun it record. is, and and I, I think like those are the types of records that that aren't, um, you know, like Jingle Bells. They're they're very much where you can, you know, it's. It's like if you're someone who was trying to tell a story in the middle of mm -hmm. um, a war. You don't just tell the story of the war. You tell a story of love in the midst of the war. And that's how some of those exactly. songs were that okay, yeah. it's Christmas, but their relationships that happen, people are missing yep. people. You so break that's up, why you miss people at Christmas. You want to get back together. You know, he sees the girl at the mall. You know, I want to know, can we talk? Yeah. You know, I got a <laughs> gift for you. Do you got a gift for me? Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a love story at Christmas. You know, yeah. I mean? you know, and she's so, like yeah. last year this time we were kissing under the mistletoe. What happened? How did we how did we not end up together at Christmas? Yeah. You know, so I try to always have that R and B element, but then have a good Christmas story, you know, with it. You yeah. Know I mean? so, yeah. That's a good record. It's a good fun record. A yeah, like let, let me see the other one. Um I like what I see in you because it's it's um in a way it it, it can take you to one of those um type of um what was the name of the um the 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 um I, I was, I'm saying the Snow Queen but it was the um it was a Disney one with the um mm -hmm. um that could be anything uh, Disney yeah. But it it, it it had that type of stuff. But I I did I did like it didn't remind me too much. It didn't it didn't seem like a Christmas song, but it just felt like it was just a nice. Yeah, it was like uh, it was written uh, a, a young guy that Martin see Mario Alexander. He writes really great piano pieces, and he sent it to me, and I couldn't figure out what to do with it. You mm -hmm. know, I couldn't figure out how to make it a complete song. So I said, you know what? So I wrote what I wrote to it, and then. I just kind of use it like the old days. Remember the old days when albums would have an interlude? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like this little piece that would fade in and fade yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then go to the next song. Earth, Wind and Fire. Mur Maurice White was great at that. He'd have a little rhythmic thing come in and then it would go away. And then all of a sudden we hear, you know, uh, Can't Hide Love. So I just <laughs> used it as like an interlude. Yeah. You know, but it really works because I, where I placed it before Try Again, I think, She's saying what I see in you, you see in me, and then they go to try it again. Uh, so okay. I just, I, I never did develop it into a full length song. I ended up loving just the piece. Yeah, no, it, 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 it did. It's very it innocent. Did. 
Yeah, so it did. It did. And I do like the piano part. And, and I think it's you yeah. know, not doing too much. It was like, OK, just perfect. It's so sweet. It's very <laughs> sweet. It's a very sweet piece. And she delivers it. She sings with so much feeling and emotion. It just makes you she makes you want to cry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Her voice makes you want to cry because she she reaches you. You know what I mean? So I love it for just the piece that it is. Like you said, it's not really Christmassy at all. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's that's part of, part of the reasons why I, I love that. And then let me see, um, uh, Christmas with you, Christmas with you, it's the title track, right? Mm. That's that's the title. Was that track. you in the beginning? And no. Then, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I have a couple of pieces. The very beginning of Closer to Me, the talking part. Okay, not the, the Santa Claus. Part, okay. In the very beginning. Yeah, okay, okay. To me. It says Christmas spirit is all in the air. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. That was you. Okay. That's me. And I had a couple of little little ad lib pieces that I kept that I did on the demo that one of the girls, Tan Smith, who sings, said, No, I'll keep your part. I said, Okay. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not working trying to, to sing into that degree, you know what I mean? But uh, no, Dennis uh sings the whole thing. Okay. Christmas with you. Uh and he did a he did a he did a really great job. Yeah. I love the I love the title track, you know. I go between Christmas with you and don't wait till Christmas as my favorites. I bounce back and forth on those two. Okay. But yeah, good record. Really good. Delivers the message really well. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I like and, then, it a lot. and then the final one, I, I'm, as I said, I mean, oh, great. I'm just talking about the f- top five. Um, uh, your drummer boy. So is that your son? That was my uh... son. DJ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That was, uh, I'm really proud of that. Probably <laughs> more than any song because it's the first thing we've done together. In all the years I've been writing music, and he, you know, he works on music as a hobby in his spare time. Okay. So I was actually working on the track, you know, in my little my home studio, and he just busted in the room and started, you know, spitting these rhymes, and, and I'm going, oh, that's crazy! I love that. Where's your phone? We need to record this. Where, dude? Get your phone. I don't remember what I said. I don't even remember. <laughs> so I just started recording everything out of the air. So he had all these little bits and pieces. So I went through them. I said, okay, here's your verse. You know, here's the hook. I'll sing the hook with you. I said, now you go finish it. So wow. he went and finished it uh, with, with two guys that I work with in my camp, Tony and Walt. And, you know, he brought it back. I said, oh man, I love it. You nailed it. I said, I love it. Cause I didn't want to take it and water it down. I wanted mm. him to be able to have that freedom. He's a younger cat. Hey, do whatever it is that you do to make it right. I don't, other than what I did, I don't want to touch it anymore. So when he brought it back, man, I, it, a lot of it's a favorite song of a lot of people, a lot yeah. of people. So yeah, he did it, a great job. He's singing on it. He's rapping. You know, he wrote. So I'm really proud that we did that, you know, together. It's really, really meaningful to me that we wrote something together, you know, and it's yeah. history. It's music. So, yeah, good, good record. As well. yeah, I mean, it, at first it was my favorite, you know, because, you know, it was the one that you can remember catchy and it was yeah, different and, and stuff. And, yeah. and I didn't want to like it because I thought, oh, no, I don't like pop <laughs> music. So I was no. like, oh, no, but it's the one I remember this most. But but after, you know, digesting the yeah. rest of the album. It's important. Then, uh, I didn't want the whole album to be just everything that I normally do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why I think that song, when it comes, and I didn't wait. At first, when I did my first sequence, that song was probably maybe third from last or maybe second to last. But as I listened to the songs, I said, okay, I've given them me. Let's kind of shock them with something that, wow, where did this come from? Like <laughs> one, one person commented online and said, is this a rap album? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, you know, Renee, uh, my assistant who does all the graphics and all the promos, you know, she put that out uh, with my son. So they thought it was like a rap album. It's like, no, 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 that's just a featured song that my son did. <laughs> so I liked it for the variety you know, of just having variety, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I didn't want it to be just all sappy. You know, I'm a ballad dude, so I didn't want it to be full of just, <laughs> you know, all that. So it, it, I really love where it is. I love it for what it is. He did a great job, you know what I mean? He's, he's a talented kid. He's really talented. talented yeah. Guy. I mean, is, is it was that just a one-off for him, or was he doing... He does some stuff on his own, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, last year he was a part of a, a show on MTV called Buckhead Shore. And, you know, I don't know if they have a second season. So he, he, he did a lot of TV stuff last year with that. And he did a little music on the show. So he's kind of trying to find his way between 
you know, being a TV personality, I do music. That's how these kids are. They do everything. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know branding, clothing. Okay. So that's where he's at. He told me the other day, he goes, I want to be rich, but I just, I bounce around with too much stuff. I go, okay, that's okay. But at some point you got to eliminate something, DJ, you know, and find <laughs> a couple of things that's going to make you some money, yeah. you know? So, so he's cool. He'll, he'll, he'll find his way. He, he's talented. So he'll, He'll find his way. And uh, the narration, my older daughter, Darielle, is doing the Christmas memory. Oh, yeah, yeah, She's yeah. remembering. And I told her just, I said, what do you remember about Christmas? We were on the phone one day. And, you know, she didn't know I was recording. Oh, that's and so what I, was I took it. Yeah, I took it. And then I put music behind it, you know, edited it. And she hadn't even heard it until the listening party. She just started bawling. She didn't even, wow. you know. And it was funny because on the way to the party, she goes, did you ever use those? pieces that I was telling you about I said no nah, it didn't work I said it was all distorted <laughs> you know so she go oh yeah I was wondering so when it came on she was like and she just came to me and hugged me started crying so wow. that's my oldest daughter the album cover is my youngest daughter Hope took the photo for the album okay. cover okay yeah and so I had uh, me and my whole family's involved my older brother uh co-wrote uh the day of Christmas with me wow. you know he does beats and he had this beat come to my house and I was like, I didn't like the songs. I, I like the beat. I could probably turn, turn that into something. So that's that he ended up being a part of, of a song too. So that's kind of cool. Everybody was, was involved, you know? Uh, so that, that made me really happy that everybody's involved with it, you know, and I dedicated the album to my dad. So it, it has a lot of meaning to me, you know? Yeah. As I said, it, it, it is a beautiful album and, and, you know, and, and I, and I know that, um, um yeah and then and i think I, I do like the fact that you, you're putting it out to celebrate but not like okay i'm trying to make a million bucks out of this because no. it, it has a very different perspective when is when you're when you're putting it out did has it did it give you an appetite to do more in different things or was it like no. okay <laughs> one of the guys dennis he keeps he like oh you need to do this you know like an r&b album and use all of us i was like no nah, dennis that's it <laughs> Done. Oh, 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 no, so, no, no. Why so? <laughs> got to know when to stop, man. You can't go too far. You got to know when to stop. You know, the Christmas album is magical. You know, mm. all those songs happen magically. They didn't happen at the same time. I wrote them over two and a half, three years. Oh, then if you go try to do something for real, then you're trying too hard. That's how I always look at it. It happens naturally for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, but no, that's it. You know, it's it's like to me that last body of work as far as an accumulation of songs, you know what I mean? So I'm happy, man. I'm really happy with it, you know, really satisfied. But, but then, you, you know, a lot of us would say, wow, there's not enough quality R&B and, and, and quality music out there that's uplifting and edifying. And um, because, you know, those who dominate the airwaves are paid by the labels and, and they're pushing out whatever it is for the uh, for generation. But, it, I, and I guess producers songwriters like creators like yourselves have the opportunity to say okay we can just make a nice body of work and put it out in the ether for everyone to, to enjoy but it must be a lot of work though so i guess that's probably a lot of work yeah. yeah it was a lot of work i worked on that all summer i started early i think i started maybe in february or so just kind of going through the songs going through old tracks you know concepting it it originally started out with me saying, I'm going to use all my favors that I've never used in the music business. I'm going to call Tony Braxton. I'm going to call Babyface. I'm going to call Kenny Lattimore, Johnny Gill, Kevon. I'm going to call all these people. And then I was like, that'll take 10 years to get done. <laughs> all those schedules and egos and flying here. And my daughter said, no, 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 daddy. It'd be more special to do it the way that you that you originally wanted to do it. So, you know, give some unknown people an opportunity to shine a little bit where they otherwise maybe not, wouldn't be given that opportunity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I like the way that I did it. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it's really, I think it's a cool story, you know, cause you have unknown people that are just as talented as the people who we know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so, mean, it was, a, I can't remember the song now uh, um, and I wrote it down but there was one song that I thought, oh, I can imagine boys to men singing it. Oh, I can't remember what it is. Now. Well, some people comment on uh, Don't Wait Till Christmas, as they Don't think that that could be Christmas. between that and Christmas with you as a boys to men song. Okay. You know, and I go, yeah, I could kind of hear Wanye singing yeah. uh, Christmas with you. 
Yeah, oh. I think it was Christmas with you. I could, I, I heard, it and I thought, oh, this is a, I can, I could see boys to men sort of jo- joining yeah. in, in, in there, and, and I can imagine if, say, Tony and Johnny Gill all sang, but the thing oh, yeah, is they would, that yeah, they would have sounded, they would have killed everything, but just the time that it would have taken, yeah, with their schedules, it's a Christmas project. They're gonna be like, ah, it's a Christmas project. We've done Christmas <laughs> music before. No, no. We love you, Daryl, but I ain't got no time to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know, this way. It was a lot of fun. You know, people came from their jobs, came from work. Wow. They were appreciative. They worked hard. Uh, it was fun for everybody. Everybody was excited. You know what I'm saying? Hey, really, the spirit of it stayed throughout. I had no hiccups. You yeah. know what I mean? Because everybody was happy, you know, to, to, to be there. And it was, uh, it, it happened the way it was supposed to happen. You and know, it is different, uh, though, that if you had, say, Sony saying, okay, yeah, we're going to back you on, on, on doing a Christmas album. So who do we want us to fly in? So that it's right. It's but not only different. yeah, but not only that, then I'm gonna have to deal with their managers, the record company <laughs> on releasing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a there's a lot of red tape and a lot of particulars that people don't know that would have gone into that. You know what I'm saying? This way I controlled it. I had no trouble. It was everything was smooth. Mm. And so it it happened the way that it was supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Face is playing guitar on Throwback Holiday. You know, people don't know he's a guitar player. When we grew up, he played guitar and I played drums. Who's this? You know, Babyface. He's playing guitar oh, on Throwback Kenny. Holiday. Oh, yeah. is he? Is it okay? Yeah. I didn't realize he got involved in it. Oh yeah, yeah. He's playing guitar for me. I sent him the track and he laced it. He killed it, and he's oh. playing rhythm guitar on Throwback Holiday. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, if you look through the credits, uh, you'll see it. Renee can get you the full credits. Yeah, yeah, no, she, 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 she didn't. No, I, I, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he played guitar on it for me. And so that was really good. And it sounds really good. People don't know he, he's a guitar player first, you know? Yeah. Um, although we see him mainly, um, we do see more, more on, the, on, on his acoustic, but not, not an electric. But an electric guitar. When we grew up playing in clubs and, and our high school bands, he's an electric guitar player. And he wasn't the lead singer. You know, we were always in band where we had a lead singer. Okay. You know I mean? So even in the deal, he wasn't the lead singer. We had two lead singers, and Kenny just happened to sing two occasions. That was the only- <laughs> <laughs> But we had two lead singers, Carlos and Dee, who were the lead singers of the deal. You know? Okay. So okay. people, and they would say, they'll sing with a guitar, they go, well, you know, he played guitar. He yeah, plays yeah. very well, plays really good guitar, electric uh-huh. guitar, solo. You know what I mean? So yeah, he's he's a very good guitar player, very good. Yeah. Did, didn't you attempt to? You didn't want to sing in any of the tracks then yourself because you no. did say you do um, a lot of backgrounds. I sing a lot of backgrounds. My voice is is in a lot of backgrounds. I, I did it just how Kenny and I would do it. We sing the demos for Tevin or Tony or After Seven. I'd go and Kenny go, okay, go in and sing the demo. I'm like okay, and I go in and sing a couple of tracks. Okay, that's good enough. They can learn it. You know so. But a lot of backgrounds, Kenny and I, on a lot of the records, we've sung backgrounds on a whole lot of the records and we wouldn't give ourselves credit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I sang background on Breathe Again. I said, well, don't put my name down. I don't want credit for it. And Kenny go, okay, go sing it. Tony's not singing it how you sing it. So if you go sing it. Right, oh, okay, I'll go sing it. But don't put my name down. So a lot of records over the years, mm. whether it's Don't Be Cruel or, you know, uh, we, we always have one of our voices or both in the background, always now, because I can always we, hear we Kenny. Though. The pattern. We I could always the hear pattern. Kenny. Yeah, I can hear Kenny. Kenny's. We, yeah. yeah, and the reason is because we want them to follow the the feel of what we created. You know what I mean? So he'll lay the foundation. It's like, okay, just do what I did, and then we'll sort of edge their voice up, okay, over Kenny's voice to get their sound. Yeah, but we always lay a pattern or what we call the foundation of the rhythm. This is how it goes: sing it with this rhythm sing it with this feel, you know, then, like I said, we'll take it out or sometimes we may just blend it, you know, very, very little, but one of us is always there, you know what I mean, in in the record. So I did a lot of backgrounds for this one, a lot of backgrounds um, on this record, you know, so it's cool. And I I like to do backgrounds. I could never be a lead singer. It's too much work. Okay. Oh my God. (laughs) But then I, and, and I guess the, um, yeah, because I, I and I guess because I didn't really hear we don't listen have the backgrounds in uh, as we used to. So like we think of like right. a can we talk, you know that type of yeah. um, um, we it, it doesn't it seems that music kind of went away from right. It did, 
And see, that's my funnest part. My funnest part is when the song's written, okay, now let me come up and make up these background parts. Oh, so okay. Once the song is done, I can sit back and just listen to it in the car or in the bed. And all of a sudden, I start hearing the background parts. That part is fun to me. I love doing the background parts. It's so much fun to me. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know. And uh, so Kenny and I, we love it. He's, he's a master at it. He hears notes. Oh, no, I hear this note. I'm like, where the hell did you pull that note from? <laughs> he's a, he'll keep going. You're sitting there and you don't know where he's going. But, you know, at the end, when he plays all the notes, it's like, damn, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, he, he is the master at backgrounds. He, and so he's a bad boy. It's a bad boy. Yeah. I learned a lot. Learned a lot from him. Learned a lot. So, so yeah. now that you you finished the album, what's next then? Because you can see your friend Kenny is, is you know go around promoting his new album and stuff. Oh yeah, he's he's on the move. He's doing great. Yeah, yeah. he's doing great with his album. I don't really have a I don't have a musical next. Only thing that I've gone back and forth on is a book. You know, and so I do have an idea of a book and tell stories about some of the some of our biggest songs and tell the stories of maybe how they were developed, that they have okay. a good story. Like End of the Road, everybody knows that Kenny wanted to keep it when we finished it. Mm. And we were like, no, nah, you can't keep it. Boyce the Man has to do it. <laughs> he recorded it and he said, okay. So little stories are tidbits that people don't know. There are mm. stories behind a lot of the records. You know what I mean? So I yeah. thought about writing a book based on my childhood uh, and a lot of the big records that we did and give people some of the behind, because I love behind the scenes stuff. You know, I love documentaries and I love hearing that story that, you know, that I would never would have known when somebody tells you something. Yeah. So uh, one of the greatest stories I heard was Gamble and Huff tell the story of me and Mrs. Jones. And they would go to lunch. They would go to lunch every day from the studio and they noticed across the street after some time that this guy and girl would show up at the same time, same place. Then they would leave and go separate ways. And that's how they came up with me and Mrs. Jones. We got a thing going on. We'll meet, same place, same time, same cafe. She'll go her way. I'll go mine. It's like, that's just a great story. (laughs) God, that is the greatest story about a song. So I have some stories, not as great as that, but I have some pretty good stories about some of the songs that we've written. You know, so I thought about a book from a different angle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the show, you know, just uh, talking about, you know, different songs and that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people's favorite songs and you didn't know that this occurred when we did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So other than that, I don't have a project right now. It's just like ride the rest of the year out, get through the holidays. <laughs> you know, I'm good, man. Good. So it, it wouldn't be like, OK, you know, maybe that sort of um, getting my favorite singers like a Tony or Johnny and like, I, even though it may take two years. Well, nah. We can, yeah. <laughs> nah. that's that was all, that was the only that was only for the Christmas album. Mm. You know, other than that, there's nothing that um, record wise that I have that I'd like to really do. You know what I mean? So uh, so I think it's outside of music, whatever it is, like the book would be a great thing to do. Um, so, yeah, but I don't have anything musically that, you know, um, you know, that I would do. I tell people I'm really kind of retired unless Kenny calls. <laughs> <laughs> did you do any help him with the-, the, uh, the No, the, the... no, he did it all. He, uh, he actually used, he said, well, you know, the first single is, I took Can We Talk and I sort of flipped it and LMA wrote some words. So he says, you're a writer on it. I go, okay, that's cool. So, but I didn't physically go and work with him you know, so I just have my writers uh, portion on Keeps on Falling, which they did a great job. That's a really yeah, good record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all he did it, you know, he did it. He, he's been working on it for forever. He calls like, oh, yeah, I'm going to the studio with this girl. I'm going to go in the studio <laughs> with this girl. Like, OK, you know, so it's doing really well for him. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Really, really cool. You know, very cool thing for him. Well, how does he? What do you? How do you think he feels about the how him to promote it? Because he has to go all the, everywhere to just to really get give it life. Because it's, it's really, uh, you know, he knows that's part of the gig. You know, he's been doing it a long time. You know, he he knows what it takes, and you know, he's not necessarily always favorable favorable, but he'll do whatever it takes to promote his 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 music. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So he's always been a trooper, you know, with that kind of <laughs> stuff. So he'll, no, he'll go, he'll grind it out, man. He'll, he'll, and that's what he's been doing. He, I talked to him the other day, he's been in New York doing some promotional stuff and he's got a couple of dates coming up. So they'll do a couple of dates in between and he'll go do promotional stuff. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. he did the Today Show, he did Jennifer Hudson, he did, he's been doing all, he's been all over the place actually. Well, so yeah, is- he works hard, hard work. Well, it was thinking about that. Would it be ever possible that you would then do a showcase of your album with your singers then as a, you know, all of them performing the songs and it just I, like, I a, don't, yeah, I don't know where, I don't know what the event that would cause that. So right now I say no, but if someone said, Hey, we'd like to feature one of the artists. It was like, okay, well that's between you and the artists. Cause I don't sing. <laughs> No, you no, no. I mean? it, it it would be almost like um, you know, getting a venue it could be a church, it could be anywhere. Almost yeah. like the uh, you know, you had your listening heard, party, but it would have been you. like you get a band, and then yeah. everyone comes and sings comes out their and part. sings their song. Yeah, and you. it's recorded, and it's just more of a you yeah. know that and each and actually the video becomes can even become yeah. part of it because they you you just get a camera crew and they're yeah. filming the whole thing. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't I just don't think past the record. Yeah, you know I, mean? I, I really don't. I do not think past the record. Okay, okay. You know, maybe if I were an artist, I'd have a different mindset, a creative mindset. But I'm like, I make records. Yeah. That's what I do. That, that's my job. I stay in my lane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to be P Diddy and get no, out there. No, and, no, no, it's not that. no, no. It, it, it is. It, so. it, but it, it would. It, it would. It would be. Pre- the almost like an unplugged version of the album, but it's again, yeah. I okay, like, I do like that idea when you said it. it would be like an unplugged version, acoustic guitar and piano. You know, Mario yeah. could play the piano and they could come up and just, you know, so that that's an idea, but I don't know. I think it would have to be an event of some kind. I no, don't know. It, you, you, you can get the kids, they can, you, you, the church buildings, there's anywhere, you just yeah. get family and friends and everyone says, come on, you, we're just going to do a live version of the yeah. album. And, so and when I get filmed. bombarded, I'm going to blame you. Because <laughs> yeah. this is your idea. Yeah. So when people start blowing me up about it, I'm going to say, no, this wasn't my yeah. idea. <laughs> no. it, it, yeah, it's a good, you know, as far as to put it, yeah, because it, it, it's, um, yeah, it, cause it's, it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to be able to, yeah. to be able to do, you. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So at least we, you know, well, all the artists are amazing singers, and and especially if they're if they're local, they would have, you know. It, yeah, it would be probably... easy to pull together because everybody, I think, but Jr. I think Jr. lives in Baltimore. Uh, he, he sings on closer to me, uh, but you know, he's always in Atlanta, so uh, it would be it would be easy to pull it together. You know, yeah. everybody's local. You know, of course, Atlanta's filled with churches and different yeah ven- 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 venues. Ven- so. That's an idea. I'll keep it way back there in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah. Way, way back there. Yeah, yeah. So the, the question I, that I did have, because a lot of people who who watched the interview, um, um, that that you know that loved everything that you you had and said, um, they they, I didn't realize that you um, that you discovered Destiny's Child. I. I don't like to take <laughs> the full credit. Okay. Uh, uh, but in a roundabout way, yeah, that's one of the stories that I'll tell in the book. It's really a great story. Uh, uh, my relatives on my, on my son's side, my oldest daughter's side, actually found them. Hey, we got these little girls. I'll give you the short version. We got these little girls. You got to see them. So they sent me like a videotape. Back then it was a VHS tape. Mm. And they sent me a tape. I go, wow, these little girls are incredible. They were dancing, they were singing. And so I flew to Houston to see them. And I, you know, got a hotel room just so they could come up and audition. And I took my video camera. I was like, wow, they're really incredible. I think at the time they may have been, I don't know, 13, 14, maybe. I can't remember. And so I signed them to my production company, uh, at the time, they were called Girls Time, and Matthew, Beyonce's dad, managed them. And I brought them to Atlanta, and I changed their name to the Dolls because they were so cute. They remind <laughs> me of little dolls. So I named them. I, I I named them the Dolls, and they were under the production company for oh two and a half, maybe three years. 
you know, tried to get a record deal, tried to get a record deal, had auditions, had showcases, and finally Sylvia Rome loved them. She flew down from New York and she loved them. And so I did a deal with Electra. And I can be honest that at the time, I wasn't, not that I'm a savvy businessman now, I was really just a producer and writer. Mm -hmm. And I didn't handle the situation well. I didn't have enough under my belt. You know what I mean? And so long story short, me and Matthew, we butted heads. We couldn't decide on this, decide on that. And, you know, they moved on from me and ended up going to, of course, Columbia at the time. And uh, the rest is history. Wow. So but they're, they're like daughters to me. I actually met with Beyonce when she was pregnant with her first child. Uh, she goes, hey, I'm doing a documentary. And I know you probably got some pictures and video. I said, yeah, I've been holding it for you. She goes, well, you come, <laughs> she goes well, you come to New York. And I said, absolutely. So she, she flew me to New York. And my engineer had transferred all the video onto you know, the computer on a hard drive. And so she said, we had a lot of stuff, but it, it melted in storage. Oh. So nobody has any footage of me when I was little. I said, well, I got all that footage that we did in the basement rehearsing at my house and the showcase that they did. And, uh, and ironically, when we did the showcase, nobody liked them. Nobody liked them. I was so disappointed. I was so hurt. I had spent so much money, outfits and staging and hair and all that stuff. And I had this big showcase and nobody liked them. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that. You know, and at the time you got to remember it was hat to the back, baggy clothes, crisscross, mm. TLC. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. these girls were beautiful. They were, they had sexy clothes on. Oh, those little girls are too sexy. They're, they shouldn't be wearing that stuff. <sighs> Not really, but I knew Beyonce was a star. She could sing. So I signed mm. them and said, this kid can sing. She's incredible to be that young. So I had the showcase. And nobody liked them. Clive Davis didn't like them. Wow. Puffy didn't like them. Wow. Kenny didn't like them. Oh, goodness. Uh, Gerald Busby liked them, but I couldn't put a good enough deal together with Gerald Busby at Motown. And then finally, Sylvia liked them. But anyway, yeah. uh, the edited version is they ended up leaving me and I met with Beyonce. We sat there for four hours and I played all this video and showed these pictures. She was in tears and couldn't believe it. And, we had a really good talk. And I told her a lot of the things that, you know, were, that were going on when they were kids. And, and, you know, we just didn't. And I ended up talking to Matthew as well. We, we really should have worked together better. But, you know, I wanted to be the boss and he was the boss of the girls. So we were just like, you know, <laughs> neither one of us wanted to release our reins as being the boss. And, yeah. you know, looking back on it, we really should have been uh, really more business minded, but I didn't have that business sense back then. You know, I was a songwriter, I was a producer. And so uh, they left. And I think that it happened. I told her, I said, it happened how it was supposed to happen. I said, if I was the stepping stone, then okay, if that's what I was to the girls, okay, because I was happy for them. I was really happy for them because they deserved to. They were talented. I signed them. That's why I signed them. So I never was bitter. I even told her when they had their fallout and all the girls were getting fired or they were getting rid of girls, people were calling me, Five Magazine, Rolling Stone, and I wouldn't do one interview because I said, well, no, I'm not going to throw any dirt on it. I said, I'm happy for the girls. So I don't, well, we know they were with you when they were little. I go, yeah, but I don't have any dirt for you. So no, thank you. I don't want to, I don't want And I told her that. She said she appreciated it. And so, I, I mean, I, I love them. I love her. She's phenomenal. Uh, and that's that was my dealing with them. So I don't take the credit that I discovered them. I say I was a stepping stone, yeah. you know, and I endorsed them. And when Columbia called me and said, hey, we're thinking about signing them. We know they're, they were with you. Is there something we need to know? I said, no. I said, they're talented. I said, sign them. And yeah. I told Beyonce, I said, I didn't think you were going to blow up like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you know. I was, I was very happy for them. And she says she remembers all the meetings, all the pep talks I used to have with them. She mm -hmm. said, I remember everything you used to say. She said, you're gonna, you have to give up your fame. You have to give up your life. And she was telling me she wishes she could go to the mall and shop normally. She wishes she could take her nephews to the beach. She can't go nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I said, wow, I just never thought that was going to happen in that way. And she goes, oh, I remember all those meetings you had. You would tell us all that stuff. You know, so they were around Usher, they were around TLC, Monica, they were around all these other people that we were working with. So they adapted the old school work ethic. 
that's why she's where she is because she comes from an old school work ethic. Mm. She works hard on music. And then she, like, like us, she was, okay, I did that. How can I outdo that? So she adapted that mentality like we did. Okay, yeah, that's a cool song, but we got to write something better than that. You ne- never, never, never being satisfied. Wow. You know, it's not about money, about yeah. can I do it again? Let me see if I can top what I did do. And she comes from that, her and Usher come from that, uh, from that mold of being around us when they were 12, 13 years old. Mm. You know, so I'm so, like I said, I'm so proud of her. You know what I mean? Very proud, very, very proud of that girl. So I told her, you know, we sat for like four hours just talking, looking at pictures and old video. They were in my basement rehearsing. She used a couple of pieces in her documentary wow. uh, that she did. And she gave me credit. Somebody told me, I didn't even know. She gave me a video <laughs> credit because I, you know, I gave her the footage. So it's a great story. But there's yeah. no so much more in between that mm. I want to say for the book. Yeah, no, but yeah, no. And to understand, I, I spent an hour interviewing Matthew, and he is a strong personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he is. He, he did, he did a, he did a great. Like I said, you have to give people like him, Joe Jackson, yeah, uh, you know, Brandy Norwood's mom. You have to give those momagers and managers because they identified the talent. They identified yeah. that their kid was talented. So give yeah. them that credit. Yeah. Give Ike Turner the credit. Give him that credit. Yeah, he was crazy. <laughs> give, him, give him that credit for knowing and seeing what he saw to push them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, what happens after that? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I ain't got to do with that. Yeah. But I, I do say give them that credit for having that vision when their kid was, uh, when their kid was young. You know what I mean? So, yeah, happened how it's supposed to happen, man. I, I yeah. always believe that. I was blessed beyond my wildest dreams. And so it happened the way it was supposed to happen. I was never bitter because I was doing well myself. And so mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, I missed. I missed on that. It's okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Now, if I never did anything, hell, I'd probably be done jumped off a bridge or something. <laughs> <laughs> or something you know, yeah, yeah, the, you know, kicking myself. But yeah. uh, I, was, I was okay and had done okay. And I've done okay in my life. I'm satisfied for what I've done. And, and I am a believer that it happens the way that it's supposed to happen. You yeah. know, that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. But yeah, that's my Destiny's Child story. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the thing, because I, I think after spending, you know, almost an hour and a half with you last time and, and knowing that you, um, your approach to, you know, th- this is my my lane and I'm not, I don't want you to step out. I can imagine the pressures of trying to become like, oh, let me do what L.A. Reid's doing now because, you exactly. know, it is, yeah. and, and not knowing. Yeah, absolutely. But I wasn't ready. Mm. I didn't have the knowledge. And the mistake I made too was not calling on him and Kenny because I I wanted to do it on my own. I wanted to show them that I could do it, you know? And so what came out of it was them saying, you have an eye for talent. You identified her. You identified that kid that she was a star. And I said, yeah, I know talent. And I didn't quite know how to develop it and Mm. get it to that level like they did at LaFace but I could identify talent, you know what I mean? So, you know, like I said, just didn't have that experience. And, you know, hindsight is what it is. Like they say, if I could do all over again, I would have, I would have leaned on them, but I wanted them to be proud of me for doing it on my own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Kenny Kenny did the way to take sale on his own and and stuff. So I can imagine. Yeah, there you go. You know? And so that was my premise for it. I got to do it. I wanted to be successful, but you know, I just, I didn't have the experience, you know, at the time, you know, and I, I couldn't let go of it. I should have let go and said, hey, I do need help, <laughs> you know, yeah. and yeah. so, but it, like I said, uh, they ended up being successful, which was, which was great. They had, they have been Beyonce, of course, doing what she's doing, and Kelly is great, you know, so, yeah, they're like daughters to me when I see them, you know, they <laughs> yeah. were, they were well, young, and, the, and the fact they that you can still have a relationship, because, you know, so many of these uh, artists would say, now he did a dirty, he took a, you know, he signed no. us for this lock. And so that's, that's yeah. always the, to your No, she, I was, I was, I was glad to hear her say she remembered all the meetings and the things that I told them when they were young. I appreciated it. She appreciated that I held on to this uh, footage and photos yeah. just for her. Cause I knew she'd call one day. Wow. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll just save it for her. She'll call one day. And yeah. So we sat there and we, we, we went through a lot of things that occurred personally, you know, cause they were young, man. They were young. They were they were they were 13 years old, 14 years old. Wow. They were young. 
And ironically, when they finally came out and hit, they hit because they were young and sexy. The thing that I tried to do. So I always say they were, I was a little ahead of the time, you know, because once hat to the back and the baggy clothes played out and they came on, it was like, wow. Uh, you know what I mean? It had, yeah. it had changed by that time. I said, well, that's what I tried to do. And everybody said <laughs> they were too sexy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. hey, it, 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 it happens the way it's supposed to happen. You know, yeah. really it's a good story. Like I said, it's a really good story. So, it, cool. The, the other question they said was, um, is it K.O.? That used to Kale, yeah. Yeah. So everyone says, uh, ask him about Kale because he used to, he he used to be part of the the team as well. But who yes, he was Kale? Kale, uh, his real name is Kevin Roberson. He was the bass player in the deal. Uh, and Kale, oh my God, Kale plays on my 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 rock with you. <laughs> you name it, Kale plays bass. One of the greatest session bass, just a great bass player. So that's his first role is playing bass. He's played bass on man. Probably these records that I you see back here. Yeah. Probably 90% Kale's playing bass. Okay. So, but Kale and I were a production team in the beginning. LA and Kenny put Kale and I under their wing to be grooming us to be the next duo of producers. And, you know, Kale just didn't have the interest to that degree that I did. Okay. You know, as, as writing all the time, recording all the time. And eventually I ended up being on my own. But originally it was Kale and I, so talented. He sings, he writes, uh, but he didn't have the same kind of, I don't know the word, but you know what I mean? Just that. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did know, he prefer he, just playing on? on yeah, you know, prefer, yeah, playing, you know, go, like go writing a little bit, mm. you know, that kind of thing, do some sessions. And he was kind of cool. Like the <laughs> other guys in the deal, they, they, they were really talented as writers, but and I don't feel like writing. Like, okay, well, we're going to write. You know, we wrote, you know, Kenny and I was 24-7. You know, we go to bed, we wake up, we, we write. So, Kale, okay, you know, so eventually I kind of started working on my own. And, you know, like I said, that's the way it happened. And, you know, it was, uh, it was a bit. He did some records with me. He and I did My, 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 the lead vocals. We did The Boys Down My Heart. Wow. We worked with Paula Abdul together uh, early on after Seven. We did we did a few records in the beginning together. You know what I mean? So really talented. He's a really talented guy. Really great ear. Uh just one of those cats that like, ah, you know, if I do it, it's cool. If I don't, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, and that's what yeah. makes them great, is that then that that you know, they're not, you know, then they're, they're not thinking, oh, I can get more publishing and stuff. It it comes Yeah, that everybody's not the same. You know, everybody's uh the same. Clarence Avon said, you can't make somebody want to make some money. <laughs> Clarence Avon said that's my goal yeah that's a, that's a good saying Clarence because you can't you know and for me it wasn't money it was just the passion of being a songwriter loving to write songs the money was just like the perk of I don't know working hard like oh wow that's a nice check okay what's that? What you, you know so it's just you know it wasn't the same passion for writing that Kenny and I had you know it's just we 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 met writing at 15, 14 years old, you know, wanting to write songs. So yeah. it just was instilled in us, instilled in us as, ch as kids, childhood, you know, wanting to be a songwriter, yeah. you know? So, and everybody doesn't have that drive. They have another drive or something else. Yeah, you like know? LA, he decided, okay, after yeah. a while he wanted to start exactly. music. Exactly, yeah. the yeah. executive running a record company, finding artists, like, oh, you can have that. I can't go into no office every day. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that one. <laughs> You know, so yeah, that was that's a talent that he had, a gift that he had. You know, and he's mm. very good at it. You know, he's he just he had that knack. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, everybody has their thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the other one they asked again was um, the first artist on the face, Damon Dane. Damien Dane. Damien Dane. Um, Damien Dane was like our version of Ashford and Simpson. Wow. Yeah, Damien was a great writer, just so talented, had mad vibe. And Dia Dame, her name was Dia. Uh, I can't remember Dia's real name. I think it was Deborah. Her real name was Deborah. So they were like a, a, and if you even listen to the album, there's still a couple of songs on that album that are crazy that we wrote. You know, Exclusivity, we had a song called Write Down To It, A Ballad. And it, I, I was amazed that it didn't take off. I don't know why it didn't take off. 
Wow. But that was our first act. We were so excited. And I don't, just one of those things, you know, hey, it's music. You know, you put all your heart and soul into it. Didn't happen. But they were called Damien Dane. And there's still a couple of songs on there. If you ever can look it up, it's a really good album. A really good album that really didn't, you know, didn't do anything. Nobody really heard it. Uh, just didn't happen. So we just kind of kept grinding and kept signing and, you know, everything doesn't hit, you know yeah. what I mean? So, but that's, you know, a lot of people don't remember Damien Dane, but I loved them. They were, like I said, they were like our Ashford and Simpson, you know, uh, very talented, both of them. And they all, they, they actually tragically passed away within a year of each other on the same day. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, and and I think people yeah. do, I think that's the part that people remember, and and I guess mm-hmm. conspiracies and stuff. But yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah, did, did they didn't stay as long on on the face. Yeah. Uh, they stayed as long as they were alive, and I'm saying, and they passed away at very young ages. Wow. You know, tragically, both of them within a year to the day to the exact yeah. day. Wow. Yeah, it was really eerie. You know, wow. but I loved them. They were good people. They were creative. They were great writers. Uh, we found Deborah in California. I don't know who found her, but she was she started in doing backgrounds for us in Los Angeles. And then you know we ended up bringing her here. And I forget how we had met Damien. I can't remember. But he just was. He just had mad vibe. He was just like from his hair to his clothes. <laughs> yeah. He was. He, he was. He was very stylish. You know, <laughs> and sort of kind of ahead of his time. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. But yeah, you make me want to go look it up again and listen to it. Because my favorite song was called Right Down To It. Oh, such a great, a great song, great ballad. Damien delivers it. Just a, I, I can hear it. I said, man, that's a bad song. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, good group. Just didn't happen, but really talented, talented people, you know. Yeah, some, uh, uh, yep. Alan said that uh, Chili danced for them. Um, yeah, Chili was dancing. That's how we found Chili. They were rehearsing. And we went to the rehearsal and this little cute little girl was dancing and she walked around. I can sing. Y'all want to hear me sing? I can sing. Y'all want to hear me sing? We're like, I want to hear you sing. Get out of here. You're a dancer. Get out of here. And so I remember being uh, at L.A.'s house. We were sitting around and they were trying to find the third member. And somebody said, what about that little cute girl? It was like, talking about she could sing. You know? Hey, there you go. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? Great personality. And they're like, okay. Yeah, she's cute. <laughs> you know okay so, so that's a... uh yeah that was her thing want to hear me sing i can sing i can sing for you but no we don't want you to sing for so, yeah. see the other crazy question funny is... girl crazy <laughs> funny. that girl's funny she could be a comedian that girl's funny. is that chilly chilly oh my god yeah she's always have dancing you, have you in tears yeah in tears. my goodness but how yeah. was it going from the because when they first came out, because I was in Nigeria when they came out with, you know, the sort of the baggies, the mixed cloths, they were just mm-hmm. that sort of almost like hip hop kind of stuff. And then they mm-hmm. go from 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 Ooh and a Crazy Sexy Tip to um, Crazy Sexy Cool and almost mm-hmm. like a, wait, wait, did, did you guys get involved with the image change or was it just like, yeah, whatever, we just write the songs like no, we special? Not, or, no, I, I didn't. I wasn't an image guy. Kenny in L.A. had a pretty good eye. I never had an eye for image, but I, a lot of that was TLC. You know what I'm saying? They knew what they wanted. They knew what they didn't want. They didn't want to be what, like what everybody else was doing. Wow. I remember we were in the studio once, and uh, they were saying, L.A. and Kenny were saying, well, Missy Elliott has this song. You know, she wants y'all to hear. I remember T-Bot's going, well, it's a, it's a hit. She said, but it's not a TLC song. She said, I don't want to do it just because Missy Elliott wrote it. And I was like, wow. I was just listening. I was like, I like that. She didn't want to take the, the hit because she said, yeah, it's a hit, but it doesn't sound like TLC. And she didn't want to do it just because she wanted, in other words, she wanted it to be genuine. She wanted it to come from them. Yeah. She wanted it to be a TLC song. And I admired her honesty about that because it wasn't about just grabbing another hit record. And Missy was hot at the time. Yeah. You know, and I remember, but so they, they always knew what they wanted. They were creative and those girls were like, they were just like so musical, but their personalities just dripped of personality individually. And that's what made them really great. It mm. was the personality along with the music. They lived the music. It was believable. Wow. You know what I mean? Hat to the back. And you know what I mean? Even Baby, Baby, Baby that we wrote. They, I never thought that it would be like that. 
<laughs> you know, but they they made it like that because they put their vibe on it and the video was really great, you know. So they they always knew what they wanted, you know what I mean? So they were very they were innovators. Even Left Eye, when when I would talk to Lisa, you know, we'd be at the studio, me and her didn't talk music. She was in the health and fitness and food. Mm -hmm. I'm like a, you know, then I was a vegetarian, I, I'm vegan now. So me and her would talk foods, we would talk health. And I remember before she passed, she had a book. Uh, Cause she was an artist and she showed me a tattoo that she had uh, come up with that she was going to have put on her back. So me and her, we didn't talk music. We talked health. We just talked creative stuff. She told me about Honduras. She was going to this place called Honduras just to get away and cleanse herself. And I was like, wow, she goes, you would like it. You would like it, Daryl. You would like it. I said, man, it sounds like it. So we had a different kind of uh, relationship when we would sit and talk. You know, I, I, I admire, I, I, I really love those conversations that we had because they weren't about music. You know what I mean? It's about other things in life. Mainly we talked health because, you know, I was a health dude. You know, okay. food and, so that's, that was our connection. Yeah. You know, yeah, I miss, miss, missed her a lot. It hurts, you know what I'm saying? And we grew up with them. You know, we all lived in a subdivision. They come and hang out and, you know, be there in the morning eating cereal. And, you know, you get to <laughs> get close to these people. It's like your, like your daughters. You know what I mean? Yeah. You watch them come from nothing to being what they became. That's incredible, man. Come from nothing in that worldwide fame like that. That was crazy. But how is it, it like it away. watching from the sidelines, seeing them uh, when you see the artists blow? Because it's very different when you guys were doing the uh, face productions with um, Paul Abdul and stuff. Because, you know, you do their yeah. stuff and you move away. Yeah, but they, then, yeah, they were successful. But to see, to create someone. Yeah not create, but help to create the sound and the success. Like Tony Braxton came Tony just Braxton. from Baltimore, just regular girl and, you know, zits on her face, and <laughs> a, no, a nobody, you know what I mean? Or TLC being a nobody and then watch them blossom into these beautiful swans. You know what I'm saying? It's that to me, that blows me away, knowing where they started. And mm. you say, wow, I sort of had a hand in that. You know, I, I kind of helped do that or my song helped do that. I'll never forget we went to Hawaii. We were in Hawaii on vacation with our families and Bobby was performing in Honolulu. <laughs> and Don't Be Cruel had just come out. It was blowing up. Wow. So hey, we're gonna go see Bobby. It's like, okay. So we get on the stage and we stand on the side and they start playing rock with you. And that whole stadium venue was like, and I was just like, like those are lyrics that I wrote on a napkin. And they're singing, the, this whole place is singing the lyrics that I made up, that Kenny and I made up in wow. Cincinnati, in his little apartment. And I had these lyrics, Kenny goes, what's that? I was just, these, these lyrics I had, like, rock with you. Freddie Jackson had a song called Rock Me Tonight. Rock Me Tonight, yeah, said, yeah. I'm going to write something called Rock With You. <laughs> and, you know, Kenny all went in and put his magic dust on it like he does. But I was standing there, like, and it took everything in me not to cry. Because I'm like, wow, they're singing, like, lyrics that I wrote and that like, it blew me away. I was like, I was done. Wow. That's an incredible feeling to, as a songwriter. Cause that's yeah. what I think we live for is to pull up next to a car and somebody at the top of their lungs is singing into the road and you're just sitting there going, <laughs> <laughs> you know, pull off and go, yeah, that's, excuse my language. That's the shit. Yeah. That's the that songwriter. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what I live for. I ain't got to be on stage. I ain't got to do no video. When I when I'm around that, it's like okay, yeah, that's cool. That's that's the payoff. You know, that's that's a very cool feeling to me. So yeah, like to see the artist blossom like that, like Tony, Tony blew me away, man. I just I couldn't believe it. You know, I called her the Black Barbara Streisand. That was my <laughs> nickname because she's just like she came from jeans and a t-shirt. Next thing you know, she's got on these gowns and she's everywhere she's performing everywhere with everybody you know and it just it just blew out it was it was crazy that was crazy first i mean album. with all the artists then who who would you think who 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 stardom and sort of rise kind of caught you off guard the most because you had usher as a kid you had tlc you had tony so i mean he's... i don't I, I would probably have to say tony because i remember uh we were, we were kind of predicting. We would all sit around and go, hey, what do you think it's going to sell? And I was like, eh, she'll probably sell 1.2. You 
you know, Kenny would say, ah, she might sell three. LA may say that she's gonna sell two. And that first album sold like nine. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, uh, but it's like, you can't predict it. You can say, okay, I think it's gonna do well. She's gonna be okay. So I don't know. They all really surprised us because they all, they all had so much huge success individually. So it wasn't like one had huge success and everybody was kind of mediocre. Yeah. They all had a huge, you know, worldwide success. That just, even that was mind blowing to that all of them could have that success on the same label. You yeah. Know I mean? You know, it, 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 it truly was mind blowing to me. You know, it's like, wow, okay, this is great. We loved it, but it was, it was not expected, not to that degree. You know what I mean? Um, it was very cool though, to see them as kids come in with nothing, just, you know, just <laughs> a normal person coming from wherever Tony came from Baltimore and Chili used to drive this little blue Volkswagen that leaked <laughs> oil all in the driveway. Next thing you know, it was like, wow. You know, Tony's going by my house with her top down and her porch with her little dog. Hey, D. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we created a monster. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the other question, they, 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 they ask us, how come you guys didn't write the ushers do do the same magic you did with Tevin on Usher because you know the first album had Diddy and his crew and Devante and all that and then right. the second was Jermaine but you, well, you and Kenny you know, that was the that was the to me the genius of of Kenny and LA saying nah we can't work on that mm. we need to get this person to work on that we're not the producers to write for that we identified the talent but we don't like TLC first album we did baby 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 I think there was a song called shock that monkey maybe it was very limited what we would always do yeah, it wasn't like we did eight songs you know Dallas it was Dallas's sound mm -hmm. Dallas was the guy Jermaine was the guy so you know you know we could identify and go yeah but we don't write like that they need to have he needs to go over there mm -hmm. you know what I mean so like I never I never actually worked with Usher on, on any of his albums. I wrote a Christmas song for Usher, ironically, <laughs> during, the, during the LaFace days that never came out. A great Christmas song. It was packaged. I still probably have a copy back in a storage room somewhere, but I never worked on Usher's album, any album of Usher. Wow. You know, people think, no, I didn't. He was on the label, but I wasn't one of the producers because he went with the other people that had the what he needed, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And so, like I said, we 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 could identify, well, we don't want to pigeonhole them and do this kind of song, do these yeah. kind of songs. You know, we knew where we fit in. Yeah. Like you said, we knew where we fit. We could work on Tony. You know what I'm saying? We could do a song or two with TLC. Kenny wrote, you know, Red Light Special. Great song. He could write a song or two in that vein. It's okay, that's it. That's my contribution and go. Yeah. you know, get with the other guys to do the bulk of it. So that's kind of like what was going on kind of back then, you know, oh. just like, okay, do I work on it? Can I work on it? It's like, no, I don't write rap music. I ain't working on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, uh, Outcasts know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, like yeah, Rico and, and, <laughs> and all their whole crew. Okay. Go do y'all's thing. Great yeah. group. I ain't got nothing to contribute. They're just on the label. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, because even Donnell, I did say, you know, he said the one regret he had is he never got to work with you. And, and I never got to work with Donnell, and I wish I had. And I don't know why. I think it, I think when I broke away from the face and left the office and had Silent Partner, I was I was into what I was doing mm. as my own producer writer, trying to establish myself, trying to make Kenny and LA proud and start my own thing. I left the nest. It was time for me to go and leave the nest. And mm. so I ended up doing, I may not have worked on that, but I did things on my own that I wouldn't have worked on if I stayed. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I work with SWV. I work with Lisa Fisher. I work with Aretha by myself. I work with Curtis Mayfield by myself. I worked with Drew Hill. I did a, a nice little body of work on yeah. my own to establish myself. So I missed out on a lot of those things that were going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was give and take. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but it was just I was I was away during a lot of that. You know, there was one Tony album that I didn't even I don't think that I worked on. Maybe a couple of them. I just I wasn't around. I wasn't wow. I wasn't there. 
you know, so uh, that's why it was great to work on love, marriage and divorce, because I had not worked. I did work on a Christmas album with her. She called me to work on a Christmas album like 10 years ago. But other than that, I had worked on a secular album. So love, marriage and divorce was great because I love working with Tony. You know, love yeah. her voice, love recording her voice. So but I hadn't worked with Tony in, in a long time, you know. The the Usher single for the Christmas album that never got released. What happened to it? Nothing. Yeah, it never. It it never. I thought it was going to be on the LaFace family Christmas album, mm. and I don't know. That's actually a really good question because it was a really good song. It was a really good song. I remember it. And uh, but it it wasn't on the LaFace family Christmas album because we had Tony, we had the Goody Mob on there, we had TLC was on there, of course. And I don't know. It's just one of those things that didn't, that ne- it never did develop or come out. You know, oh. it never did. So yeah. Did Did you work on Pink? Because somebody said to you. Yes, you do- earlier on. Yeah. Uh, okay, forget. Alex asks about that. Yeah. I don't know. You have to look it up. I couldn't tell. Choice you. or was she in a girl group? Or they, was they were. They were Choice. Oh, they were three. They were three white girls. They were Choice. And so I went in the studio with Choice, and I did. I think I started with them first at the face, and we did one record. And then later on, you know, Kenny in L.A. was like, well, they just the other girls don't fit with her. Mm. You know what I mean? Because she was, you know, she was pink <laughs> back then trying to be in a pure white bread trio <laughs> singing group. You know what I mean? And uh, I remember she came up to my office once and she goes, you know, she goes, she put her leg up, goes, I don't want no white boys in my video. And I was like, <laughs> really? No, I don't want no white boys in my video. I was like, this girl different. I think it wasn't soon after that, like LA said, or Kenny said, she's gonna be rock. She's gonna do a rock album. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but she knew what she was. She was, you know what I mean? It's a great voice. I, I don't know what album, I think it's the very first one. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I, I, you know, I don't think it was a hit or anything, but I loved her. I loved Alicia. Alicia was fun. She was, she was crazy. She was fun. <laughs> so talented. She did some backgrounds for me, actually, on a couple of my projects. Yeah, she did backgrounds. I think on, she may have sang on Shantae and Kenny Lattimore. I, I was doing a duet album of remakes, but she sang on a couple of things for me. Wow. Great, as you know, great voice. Yeah, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great voice. And I haven't seen her since back then. I've never run into her. You know, I'm so happy for her success because once again, she, I knew she had that talent. Wow. You know what I mean? I didn't see it being a rock star. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? I didn't yeah. see that, but the voice was there. Her voice was incredible. Just, I was like, my God, you know, so strong and just in pitch and always hitting the notes and, you know, but yeah, I forgot about Alicia and Choice. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was Alex who asked that. And they asked, they always, the odd question they always asked again was Jermaine Jackson. You had a Jackson. Jermaine Jackson. Yeah. What happened? Great album. There's a, there's a couple of songs on there. One song in particular called Don't You Deserve Someone. Oh my God. Look it up. He kills it. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. You know, my favorite song on the album. Just didn't happen. Wow, that's, that's didn't amazing. Happen. And I love working with him. He was so much fun. He was funny. I go pick him up at his house and renting this house in Buckhead. And I go pick him up, bring him to the studio, take him home. And uh, he was, he, that dude was funny. <laughs> I, 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 I used to tell Michael, I'll, I'll kick your ass, you little mother. <laughs> <Jermaine>. <laughs> He was so funny. Jermaine was so funny. That dude would keep us in stitches all the old. <laughs> and I went to Los Angeles and he took me. I went to Havenhurst, the house, and I went in and I met the mom, met Catherine. He oh, introduced wow. me to Catherine and he showed me all the stuff, you know, all the stuff Michael had done. They had it in a, like, actually like a, like you're in a jewelry store. <laughs> you know, all the awards and Grammys are all in these big cases and, and off the living room. That, that couch right there is where I quit. I sat right there on that couch and I told my father, I quit. That's the spot right there. I was like, that's cool, man. He's a great guy. Funny guy. He's funny. Man, talented. Yeah. You know, a lot of old Motown stories. And mm-hmm. took me around, showed me everybody's bedroom, Michael's room, and everybody's room. He slept at Havenhurst. And funny guy. Talented too, though. You know, he, had, he had really good sex, uh, uh, success as a solo artist. Yeah, you know, yeah we, really we, we were really, surprised he, really he, well. he didn't do do well. Then now people mm-hmm. asked, did, was he upset when you guys went to work with Michael on the Dangerous album? And then 
because he was signed to you guys. Remember. No, I don't. I okay. don't remember him being upset. I don't remember that. I don't think he was. Okay. Per se. I can't. I don't. Kenny would know. Kenny's memory is always better than mine. <laughs> I don't think he was upset. I think Michael called Kenny in L.A. because we were working with Jermaine. Uh, That's what I think. That was just my own. Mm. But I was excited to go. And <laughs> yeah. Michael, so I didn't care. I'm like yeah. Michael Jackson. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, yeah. so, but I think there was a little, that little camaraderie because Michael is, you know, Michael is, he's, you know, he, he's manipulative. He yeah. uses his power. You know, he uses his power. He's the only person who wouldn't come to Atlanta. Everybody else would come to Atlanta, but he wouldn't wow. come to Atlanta. So we went out there for two weeks. That was it. We gave him two weeks. And it was, it'll be in the book. It's, it's, a, hell of, it's a hell of a story. One of the chapters will say, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah, yo, man, you have to. Do you have to come up there? Then, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is a. It is a good story, and uh, <laughs> I'll tell you just a quick. When we met him, uh, he came in, and we were talking. Which two guys are from Indiana? Those wow. you two guys are from Indiana. I can tell you a sense of humor. You and you are from Indiana. I said, "Yep, from Indiana, just like you." Oh, you know? oh yeah, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Funny guy. It's quite the experience. I, I don't. I will not give that away because it's a it's a hell of a story. I mean, growing up in in Gary, Indiana, was sorry, it, the, being from um, in um, from the same place. Were, were they always? Did they seem? Did they seem far? You know, did they seem big? Well, see, the thing about Gary, Indiana, it was north. It was just that far from Chicago. We lived in Indianapolis, which was probably I don't know two hours away. So it wasn't even the same city. It was just the same state. But okay. Gary was up north where the steel mills were, mm. right at right at right at Chicago, you know. So it was Indiana, but it wasn't in Indianapolis where Kenny and I grew up. Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, so it's just the it's just that we we both were we were all from Indiana, you know, okay. from the Midwest. Still Midwest though. Still yeah, relative. Yeah. It's yeah. the Midwest, but uh, you know, uh, but is is it? I was glad I got the opportunity. It didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. Yeah, it, was, it was great to be in the room with him, to talk to him, to work with him, to be around him, even though mm. there were some challenging days <laughs> that I'll talk about in the book. But I, 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 I was grateful for the opportunity to get to go to work, mm. you know, to work, to work, to work with him along with, of course. It was Kenny and LA with the producers. I was there as a writer. Yeah. So uh, I was on the couch. Yeah, you know, but, he, but you know, I talked a couple times with him. You know, so it was. It, it, I'm glad that I did it. You know, to mm. get to meet him. Never thought I would even be in the same room. So yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was cool. And then the song that we did that he didn't use, "A Slave to the Rhythm." Passed away, yeah, when he passed away, and Sony was putting this album together, they did use the song. So that was kind of cool. You yeah, know? yeah, it was. Yeah. A, it was a. It was an okay song. Yeah, we, we 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 wait for the book. SWV. So they came out with their um, their Derby album, and then they didn't for some reason they weren't working as much with Brian and on their follow up album, um, and and you worked with them. What was did was how was that like uh, working with SWV on? on I loved the, it. They were great. I wish I could have done New more. I, went, I don't even know how I got that gig. Somebody called. I went to New York because I worked in New York. I wrote the song, and they loved the song. I went up to record it. It was a song called You Are My Love. Really sweet ballad. It wasn't a hit, wasn't a single, but it was a great, it was like, they told me when I saw them once, they said it was like actually one of their favorite songs. And I was uh, backstage at a Mariah Carey show. We were back there and Mariah was playing it. And wow. she goes, Daryl Simmons, this is one of my favorite songs. And she was playing it in her dressing room. And I was like, wow, that's like, I'm honored. <laughs> because, you know, that song didn't see the light, light of day, but Mariah found it and she, she loved it. You know, so that's kind of like it was a hit to Mariah. So I'll, t- I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a sweet song. It's, it's it's actually one of a lot of my favorite songs aren't the hit songs. You know what I mean? Like "You Are mm-hmm. My Love" is a really sweet song that I really, I really love it. That Coco just man, she that girl, Jesus, <laughs> that girl can sing, man. You know, and then the girls with their harmonies, just a great solid group. You know, they they do have a sound. Yeah, you know, Taj and Lee Lee contributed a lot to the backgrounds. And it's, it's, it was fun to work with them, just a one-off, you know. So 
great. I, I like the experience sometimes. It's not about the hit. Sometimes it's just the experience of me. So like we've been friends forever. You know, she actually came in town and sang on something uh, for me that she was doing with Kevon. And, you know, so you become friends with people. It's about the relationships, not always yeah. about, oh, we didn't write a hit. It's like, you know, it's like now, nah, but we became friends. You know what I mean? For yeah. life. So a lot of great experiences, even though we didn't have a hit, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's that was that was a really a fun session. And, you know, so, yeah, I like that song a lot. You know, you know as we as, as we wrap up you you um you you've said it um you me the world to me is your favorite song yeah that's probably my top song and then it goes probably can we talk rock which is my 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 end of the road maybe but uh so yeah. the, you, you mean what what about you mean the world to me that you, that you really like because it, it um you, was there it's, anything uh, special about it it's the way it sounds Mm. It's the way it sounds. It's Tony's delivery. Uh, it's, it's, it's a combination of the sound and Tony's uh, vocal delivery that I just love. I really, mm. it's just something about the, it's like, can we talk? It's something about the sound of it. And, you know, because Kenny did the music, it's something about the way he created the music that's just so identifiable, even when it comes on. You know, you know, Tevin hasn't sung a note. And when you hear it's just like, damn, that's like a smash. And I ain't heard a note. You know what I mean? And I don't know, it's just little things like that that I listen for that, you know, normal people wouldn't really listen to it. But it's it's usually for me a sound, you know, a an ambiance or a mood when I hear it, you know what I mean? And that's, those two records have that to me. Mm. Uh, it's the grand piano on You Mean the World to Me. I think a guy named Vance Taylor played, he ended up playing with Frankie Beverly, the way he played the acoustic piano. He, we would always let someone come in and replay. Okay. And Penny and I write and play, but I don't call myself a piano player. Mm. You know, I'll call in, I used to call in Vance, or I'll call Mario, hey Mario, play it better than me, because those guys are real piano players and the way they would embellish it, like, oh my God. You know, it's the way it's supposed to sound. So it's like the the grand piano and Tony's performance, and, you know, the melodies that Kenny comes up with. And then, you know, I'm, I'm a lyric man, so I love. Oh, so he made it okay. Lyrics, you know what I mean? It's always something, just a little bit of something that pulls me in. You know, yeah. that's what pulls me in on that. That's what pulls me in on Can We Talk? You know, the beginning of My 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 with Kenny um, Kenny G's saxophone. A lot of people don't know that's Kenny G on soprano sax. Wow. When he first comes in, Gerald Busby hated it because in the beginning, <laughs> Kenny, had a, Kenny had a synthesizer line that Gerald loved. And when we recorded it, you know, decided to use Kenny G. And Gerald hated it. What happened to the little synthesizer line you had on the demo? You guys ruined it. It's like, no, nah, <laughs> no, he didn't. That's Kenny G. You know, so just even when Kenny G comes in, before Johnny even sings, it's like, it's like yeah, it's like the mood of that. It's like you see mm. the girl walking in with her red dress, her hair's down, her lipstick on. You just see it. It's like, damn, that's a bad record. <laughs> I did that. I turned that up. That's like, man. Did you know it was gonna be a hit though when when, when you were writing it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, so those certain ones, you know, you don't know how big, but you know. When it feels good and you get chill bumps like like that, it's like, oh man. Yeah, you know, you know, you could you you know, but you don't know the number, you don't know how big. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's a smash. You go, okay, that's a smash. That's in there. That but then also Johnny's Johnny's delivery. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're exactly right. Johnny was the perfect, and he was young when he sang that. Wow. He wasn't a grown, grown man, but he had <laughs> so that was the problem back then. He had that grown man voice. You know what I'm saying? When he sang with Stacey Lattisaw, but this dude's like teenager singing like, <laughs> you know, and so it was the perfect marriage. Now we've written that mature song where his voice can shine. The perfect song for that grown man, mature voice. Like I said, his, his greatest song to date. You know what I mean? Ain't yeah, no yeah, yeah. It's, it's his signature song. It's that my 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 is his signature song. There's some other great songs, Fairweather yeah. Friend, mm. you know, what Jimmy and Terry did, Rub You the Right Way. 
But my, my, my. Mm. When you think yeah. of those classics, you have Superwoman and My, My, My. I mean, do you... Mm-hmm. Do you think which I mean, I mean, Karen, I mean, a lot of us were disappointed that you guys didn't do her sophomore album. Um, I think L.A. explained the whole fallout with Benny Medina and, and how that yeah. that prevented yeah. and stuff. But watching. I hated the, it, too, because it was fun working with her. Me and her, it was like it was we worked great together. We wrote, we sang backgrounds, you know, her and I sang backgrounds on Fairway the Friend. That's me and her singing, oh. me and her and Kenny singing on Fairway the Friend. So, yeah, I hated not working with her again. It's like, damn, why not? That's it. All the success we had when I'm working on another album, you know? It's like, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Wow. things happen, you know? Business. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, you know, I mean, and, and I think that's what that will, I, I do hope. Anyway, just, just as we wrap up, I mean, guys, um, the Christmas album, uh, it, it is it is out. It is a special album. Um, as I said, one Christmas wish is my favorite song on the album because we're the album? Um, yeah, yeah. It's in it's in my wife's car because that's the only place that <laughs> yeah because that's okay. the only car that has a CD player so yeah, every, yeah, so right. throughout the day yeah, yeah. so yeah. so it's it, 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 it's in there um, cool, but um, but I, I I will keep I will keep pushing it. I mean until you come up with a yeah, video um, it. it's yeah, yeah. Um, I'll appreciate I'll make sure everyone everyone but I have shared the link on 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 this on the, on the youtube channel so people can okay, just great. click on it and, and go straight in there okay, cool. um, that, it's um yeah until you know hopefully you will get to see a, a an unplugged version of, of the album performed <laughs> by, by the singer your idea not <laughs> yeah. mine people his idea yeah yeah, yeah hit him up ask him when is it yeah. gonna happen don't hit me up because what what you what you could easily do is just get it filmed up. Your, your your kids will film it up, and then it'll be right. posted out. Right. And then it's like, wow, look at the visuals for the. It's because yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful song, beautiful. I mean, Thank that's you, man. A, appreciate it. I appreciate you pushing song. it and letting people know. I appreciate that, man. Having me on too. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. No, and you know, so um, definitely, it'll be great just to see. Yeah, when a video comes out, we we will premiere it as as well. But if not, okay. if there's a concert out, we'll do the same. It's um, all right, man. <laughs> it's it's always it's but it's it's really it's really great that you've you know everyone's really always always thanks you for you know for the stories and and for the work that yeah, you've done. Cool. And, yeah, they're and, good stories. And, I, don't, I don't mind telling a few, but I got to save it for the book. So that's the next. Yeah. Yes, project next couple of years maybe. Yeah. May take a minute. This yeah. took a while, so you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, and I think fi- the final, final, final thing, soundtrack. What would be your favorite soundtrack? Because I've been, I'm running, I've been running a daily poll for the past. My favorite weeks. soundtrack of all time. Favorite soundtrack, yeah. That you think of, yeah. Easy. You, Superfly. Which, okay. Birds Mayfield. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Purple Rain a second. Okay. Jimmy will say Purple Rain first, and I get it. Yeah, it's uh, but for me, you know, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. Because you think about the ones in the seventies, you had Superfly, you had you had Car Wash, you had yeah, um, I, yeah, you had Lady Sings the Blues. You've you've, yep. you've got yeah. um, Shaft. There some good ones. There were some good ones, but what Curtis did, relatable to the music and and the movie, and Freddie's Dead, and you know, I don't know. It's just for me, <laughs> Superfly, man. Yeah. You know, Ron O'Neill, Curtis Mayfield, Sheila Frazier. Heck yeah, I remember it all. <laughs> I remember it all. See, my generation is the, 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 the matter what I put up there, it's um, Exhale. That's the one that wins exhale? every. Wow. Yeah, wins That's every. It's a great one. It wins it's every poll. I think, that they, I think yeah. it's just. For for those of the nineties, those who yeah, it is the nineties. Those in the nineties, they that's right. that's their favorite album. So right. if you put it I up get again, it. yes, different generation. Yes, you generation. know, you're right. But all of those soundtracks are all great in every right. You know, Isaac Hayes. Well, I think the first what black person win an Academy Award for mm-hmm. I think Shaft or the scoring yeah. or the mm-hmm. or the, the the soundtrack, which was incredible. Which is a great, incredible soundtrack. You know, but something about Curtis, just the rawness, mm-hmm. the R and B ness of it. I'm R and B dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just uh, I don't know. Songs are just they just seem raw. They seem like they were done in like one take. Yeah. You, know, you know, okay, let's do it. One take. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, you think so, he gets the the the, the recognition that no, um, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. I, I've said that in interviews that Curtis Mayfield was a genius. And I got to work with him when he was what? paralyzed in a wheelchair. 
Oh, and you know, once again, we did, it wasn't a hit, but to be around him and to, I would go to his bedside to write, you know, he lived in Atlanta. I'd go to his bedside to write, we wrote together. Then we recorded the song, brought him to the studio and uh, a great story. He said, okay, you have to lean me back in order for me to have enough wind to sing. So we actually would take the wheelchair and, uh, uh oh, sorry about that. So we would take the wheelchair and lean the wheelchair back. So he was like this. Wow. He took the microphone, aimed it. He said, that's the only way he could get enough air to sing. Wow. Yeah. But Curtis was a genius to me. He was a genius. I, I, I loved him as a man, talking to him. He was very quietly political. If you listen to a lot of the songs, he followed what Martin was doing. You know, we're a winner. And some of those songs were going along with what Martin was doing. He was supporting that through his music. If you listen to the songs, you know, mm. he was, he's a genius to me. He, and he does not get that credit. Yeah. yeah. Curtis Mayfield was, was incredible to me. A lot of guys back there, Curtis Mayfield, Leon Silvers, Norman Whitfield. Those guys were geniuses, man, with no auto tune and all. No, there's no real, you know, the technology and the yeah, records yeah. they made. Leon Silvers was incredible. But he, he, he gets the, he gets, yeah, he gets the yeah. you know for being on Solar and 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 and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and a lot of yeah, things from yeah, there, yeah. and then all well, filled with those temptations. Guys. Yeah, yeah, I admired them for their songwriting back then when I was really younger and I would listen to what they were doing. And these guys are like really incredible, you know, but still didn't get their just due like they no. should. Have. And and I only remembered, um, I only only remembered um, Curtis Mayfield when uh, Ice T came out with the Superfly. I was like, and and that's oh, how no, I got to go backwards. You got to go back. How I, that's how I got to yeah. know Curtis Mayfield was when Ice T came out with yeah, that. Exactly, album. that was his that was his highlight big moment. But if you go before then, even when he was in the Impressions, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, he was a, a guy that sang in a singing group but played guitar. I thought that was odd. <laughs> you know what I mean? To have a singing group, nobody played an instrument in the singing group, but Curtis yeah. Mayfield played guitar in the Impressionist and, wow. and stayed a guitar player. You know, I thought that was like, I like that, you know. So, no, but he had songs be be before that, you know. Uh, People get ready, there's a train a coming. Don't need no ticket, just get on board. You know, we're a winner, gotta keep striving, keep pushing. Just listen to those records, the lyrics, man. It was very side by side with what Martin was doing. It's like he was writing the soundtrack to what Martin was doing to me, quietly. Well, why do you think yeah. he, he he doesn't get to know? Because we don't talk about don't him as much. I don't know. I, good question. Very good question. I don't know. You know, I really don't know because that guy, he was, he was incredible to me, really. And not just because I worked with him. I admired, I worked with him later years. I, I admired him when I was young, you know? So, yeah, he just doesn't get that credit that he really deserves. You know, great musician, songwriter, producer, arranger. He did all that stuff, man. But how did you know he get I mean? to, how did you get to work with you? Did he call you? Or? Somebody called and said, hey, Curtis Mayfield wants to work with you. I was like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. I went to his house because he was, you know, he'd be in the bed. And so I want you to come up with something like this. And so I came up with a track and we actually wrote it together. You know, I didn't write it all. We wrote it together and. It was a great experience for me, you know what I'm saying? To work with somebody that I admired, you know, I was honored, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, wow, me? Sure, I don't know why you called me, you know? But yeah, one of, one of my highlights of my career, once again, even though we didn't write a hit, yeah, yeah, yeah. meeting him, writing with him, talking with him, you know what I mean? That was like an honor to like, damn, it's Curtis Mayfield, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Same thing for Elton John, we didn't write a hit, but me and Elton became, Daryl, tacos, nine o'clock. Nice. <laughs> okay, Elton. It's Elton John, dude. <laughs> you know? Great yeah. relationships. The story is just to meet somebody, become friend, call them a friend. You know what I mean? So good stories. Gotta go, man. I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta go eat. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there uh, so, 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 so it's great. Um Make You Do Right by Karen White. That was you, right? That's a good record. It was good. Not a hit. It was fun. Yeah. It was good. It was a good record. Yeah, good record. So it was cool. So guys, we, we thanks. Uh, we, we want to thank Daryl for taking time to talk to us again. His album is out now. Um, I'm going to repost the link. Um, yeah, repost everything. Let him know. And hopefully we'll, we'll get to see the uh, unplugged version of the album with the Your amazing singers. <laughs> yeah. Your project. Yeah, yeah. But it's great. Right, thanks, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we'll Thanks, keep man. in touch. All right. Take, Take care. care. <laughs>